in 2011, a major revelatory shift took place. Into my living room walked these YWAM wild men, and they begin to prophesy there's coming a shift to the call, and it will not just be fasting and prayer, but the proclamation of the gospel. Signs and wonders and stadiums will be filled, and Billy Graham's mantle's coming on the nation. And then they said, the call is going to lead to the send. And it struck me, maybe the call is a forerunner for a new Jesus movement coming. It put me in shock and I knew it had a time period to look to the place and time when Billy Graham would die. At that moment, a massive shift's coming and it will not just be John the Baptist, it will be Jesus, the evangelist, is going to fill stadiums in America. Sounds exciting, right? Now, during a recent panel discussion involving Lou Engel, Bill Johnson and Benny Hinn, a question was asked concerning what hinders the flow of God's Spirit, and listen to the answer given. I was going to ask Pastor Benny, but I'll... Go ahead, I'll, go ahead. Yeah? Yeah, we'll move back to Bill with Dave. I think out of the whole panel, um, you're so uh, gifted in many different ways. I want to ask Pastor Benny, whenever I've seen you, your whole meeting seems totally based around the flow of the presence of God and the glory of God. Everything that you do is about the Spirit of God, you know, flowing in that service. Tell me uh, three things that uh, you found that hinder that. Everything three okay? that would hinder God's presence. Yes. Well, I mean, I talked about the importance of atmosphere. Uh, if there is no atmosphere, it would hinder it. I'm serious. Because it kills faith. Many churches, listen, listen, great ministries have been killed by small crowds. Because you have to have the excitement of a crowd. Are you seeing this? The message is, you have to have excitement and big crowds. Otherwise, it supposedly hinders the Spirit of God. Many churches, listen, listen, great ministries have been killed by small crowds. Because you have to have the excitement of a crowd. Because you have to have the excitement of a crowd. We believe this day something will transfer and bring us into, I believe, worldwide transition into the greatest Jesus movement we have ever seen. Now listen to this important, inspired statement from the book The Great Controversy. Before the final visitation of God's judgments upon the earth, there will be, among the people of the Lord, such a revival of primitive godliness as has not been witnessed since apostolic times. At that time, many will separate themselves from those churches in which the love of this world has supplanted love for God and His Word. The enemy of souls desires to hinder this work, and before the time for such a movement shall come, he will endeavor to prevent it by introducing a counterfeit. In those churches which he can bring under his deceptive power, he will make it appear that God's special blessing is poured out. There will be manifest what is thought to be great religious interest. Multitudes will exult that God is working marvelously for them, when the work is that of another spirit. Under religious guise, Satan will seek to extend his influence over the Christian world. In many of the revivals which have occurred during the last half century, the same influences have been at work, to a greater or less degree, 
that will be manifest in the more extensive movements of the future. And what will happen? There is an emotional excitement, a mingling of the truth with the false, that is well adapted to mislead. Yet none need be deceived. In the light of God's word, it is not difficult to determine the nature of these movements. Wherever men neglect the testimony of the Bible, turning away from those plain, soul-testing truths, which require self-denial and renunciation of the world, there we may be sure that God's blessing is not bestowed. Because you have to have the excitement of a crowd. This false excitement is going to bring about false signs and wonders. And Satan is going to use this to make the world think that God is behind the revival and use it to unite the professed Christian world together in this ecumenical movement. We have far more in common than what divides us. When you talk about Pentecostals, Charismatics, Evangelicals, uh, Fundamentalist, Catholics, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, on, on and on and on. Well, they would all say, we believe in the Trinity, we believe in the Bible, we believe in the resurrection, we believe salvation is through Jesus Christ. These are the big issues. But the most important thing is, if you love Jesus, we're on the same team. The unity that I think we would see realistically is not a structural unity, but a unity of mission. One of my favorite days in my life was with Pope Francis. What a man. He's one of my heroes. And this is what he's all about. This whole thing. That's one of the things that got me so on fire about it. And I am on fire. Friends, these are false prophets and false preachers who are preaching a false Jesus, and Satan is using them to bring about a false revival to cause the world to worship the papal beast of Rome. God said the following would happen in the last days. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils work in miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. The dragon is Satan, the beast is the papal church of Rome, and the false prophet is apostate Protestantism. And these three are coming together to deceive the whole world into worshipping a false Jesus which will be Satan himself. Uh, I, I, I saw um, the Grand Canyon, and on one side was a people group, and on the other side was a people group, and I saw it seal shut. I just saw the whole Grand Canyon seal shut, and I don't know what the people groups are. I don't know if it's countries. I don't know if it's religions. I don't know what it is. But I was just with Leif Hetland, and his, was, his calling is to go to the Muslim community, and to help us to understand Ishmael, you know, so it's Isaac and Ishmael. So for him, it's like Jewish and Muslims, or for us, the Muslims. You have a calling to, to close a gap and an authority. To, does this make sense at all? Is this making any sense? Catholics and evangelicals. And are you actively doing this? Is there something you're working on? Okay, so this is like a big deal. This is for real. Okay, so this is huge. Okay, so... So something's going to happen, like now. I don't know when now is, but like now. I hear the word now. That's going to move it forward and build trust for you to do it in other environments in a huge way. Praise the Lord together. Yes. Let us praise the Lord together. Catholics, evangelicals, we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. Bishop O'Connell is here with me. Please say hello. Bishop David O'Connell, I love you, Jesus. Thank you for bringing us all together again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. But we will not have revival until we have reconciliation. Pope Francis is the perfect example of this. He is, a, he is doing everything right. 
as, as our new pope, he was very, very symbolic in, you know, his first mass with people of aid. In fact, there's a headline here in Orange County, and I love the headline. I saved it. It said, if you love Pope Francis, you'll love Jesus. <laughs> that, that was the headline? That was the headline. Oh. It was the headline. I saved it. I showed it to a group of priests I was uh, speaking to a while back. So. Yeah, I love that. I mean, just imagine a true movement of unity. Not just uniting people like you, but the whole church rallying together. Catholics and Lutherans and, and evangelicals and charismatics literally rallying across the nation saying, you know what, we may not say the same things, but we're on the same team. I believe that the Catholic Church and the Christian Church are going to come together right now. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus, God, for a mighty baptism on the Catholic Church, God. In Jesus' name. Thank you for a massive baptism on the Catholic Church. I thank you for the fire of heaven in Jesus' name. God, I thank you in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus' name. The protest is over. This was brought about by spirit-filled Pope and spirit-filled Lutherans that got together in the Holy Ghost. Now, take a good look at that picture. The night before, we had a dinner together before we met with, the, with Pope Francis the next day. That many evangelicals in one room. <laughs> uh, folks, you don't get it. I'm telling you one thing. If all of us Christians come together, the next shows we'll do will be in heaven. Jesus but it won't be the Son of God whom they accept. It will be Satan impersonating the second coming of Christ. And this is what Satan is doing with uniting all the churches. He is preparing them for his appearing as the false messiah. When he appears as an angel of light, doing great wonders and miracles among the people, and those who unite with Babylon will be fully taken by the deception and be forever lost. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Friends, if you think we have much to fear from the world, I am telling you, we have much more to fear from within the churches, as this is where the greatest deceptions are coming from, and this is where the greatest persecution will come from, from the churches of Babylon. Please seek the truth and come out of the fallen churches. God is calling you. Friends, I urge you, as well as your own personal Bible study with the Lord, to read this amazing book called The Great Controversy. All things that are taking place right now were told in this book that were written over a hundred years ago. This book gives the true events of history and also what is coming upon this world, explaining in clear lines the final events of Bible prophecy. Please seek the truth. You can download a free PDF of this book from the link you can see on the screen. The link to it is also in the description of this video, which you can simply click.